Hey guys, what's up? My name is Dan and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about England versus Netherlands, the semi-finals of the Euros 2024. And it was an epic game, lots to talk about with it. I'm going to try and keep this video to 10 minutes though, because uh, uh, I don't want to keep you guys for too long. But um, yeah, let's get straight into it guys. Obviously it was a massive game. Um, not only because of the fact that it was the semi-finals, but two decent teams. Um, obviously, France and Spain were in the other one. Spain won that. So they, we always knew that if we win this game, we get Spain in the final. So it's a daunting task. But, um, but yes, Netherlands are no joke either. And, um, yeah, we always knew this was going to be a tough game. Uh, obviously, the hardest game of the tournament so far. I think Switzerland were the previous diff most difficult game. But we overcome them eventually. So, um, yeah, going straight into this game. Um, conceding really early, which is, um, you know, we've conceded first um, a few times in the tournament, but never so early. Um, I was telling everyone, really, that I thought it was going to uh, be a draw, I thought it was going to go to the penalties, and, um, the, yeah, obviously, <laughs> conceding in the seventh minute, I think it was, Chabi uh, Simons, with a really good goal. Obviously, a big mistake from Declan Rice, which is unusual for him. Um, I don't think he's quite used to Gareth Southgate's um, you know, way of doing things. I think he's used to Mikel Arteta uh, having things a little bit more structured. Um, but yeah, unusual mistake from him, but obviously got, they got ends up getting the ball and Chavi um, did a really good goal, scored a really good goal, so fair play to them. Um, and then we, we did bounce back though. Um, you know, it's not like um, England were, you know, um, shell shocked from that. I think you know England were like, okay, here we go. Like this is what we've got to do. Um, and yeah, they stayed in the game. Um, you know, had plenty of chances. Foden, I thought, had his best game in the tournament. Um, still useless in the sense that he didn't actually score. Um, had tw two shots that he should have really scored. The the one that didn't quite go over the line, and then obviously the worldy that would have been if he hadn't hit the uh, hit the post. So. Um, he had a really good game, he was a bit of a threat, but the whole England squad really was attacking quite well, just, you know, the very last bit was just missing, couldn't get the ball over the net, um, and then the penalty happened, you know, his biggest point of the game, his biggest talking point of the game, is the biggest thing that people are talking about, even now, you know, uh, almost a day later, um, yeah, I mean, for me, I think it's, it's one of those difficult ones. It's one of those ones, I think, that VAR was made for. Um, you know, can't, some people thought it looked like a penalty. Some people thought it didn't look like a penalty. Um, so it went to VAR, and I don't think anyone can um, argue the fact that it went to VAR. Um, and obviously, they had a really quite a long look at it. It looked, I mean, it took a, quite a while. And then they ended up eventually had to call the referee over who gave it. Um there's arguments for and for against. I think it's one of those ones that could have gone like the way. Um, for me, the Netherlands player had every right to go for the ball. Uh, obviously, uh, he wanted to block it. He wanted to, you know, tackle Harry Kane, or he wanted to get the ball off him, or stop him from scoring or shooting. Fair play, he had the right to do that. But there was a risk to it. Um, you know, it's not like, you know, there was a risk to it, and and. You know, he got caught out. Um, Harry Kane hit the ball first, and then the defender kicked his foot in the box. Like, it was a, it was a foul. He would have been given a foul, and I don't think anyone would have complained if it had been outside the box. But because it was in the box and it was a penalty, you know, it would have equalised things for England. It was a big, big call. Um, obviously, some people are never going to be satisfied. It's going to be one of those things that some people think it is, some people think it isn't. It, was it soft? Yes. Uh, did the defender have a right to go for it? Yes, he did. But he, he missed. He missed the ball, didn't get the ball, got Harry Kane in the box. Like... <laughs> We made contact. There was contact there. And I feel like everyone that thinks it's not a penalty, if it went against you, if it was one of those ones that goes against you, I think it probably was a penalty. I don't know. But for me, it was a penalty. It was just a very, very soft one. And I can understand why people some some people think it was harsh. Um, I don't think it was incorrectly given. I think it was just harsh. Um, you know, and like I said, I think if it had been outside the box, I think, and no one, they would have been given as a foul and no one would have been that bothered about it. It's just the fact that it was a high stakes moment in the game. Um, and yeah, England did benefit from it. Then, you know, they, Harry Kane buried his penalty, which, you know, he does quite well. Um, and yeah, well, suddenly it's 1 1 again. Um, for me, it was a penalty, soft again, like I said, but. Um, I, I don't understand people saying that it, oh, it's not, never a penalty. Oh, oh, might as well tell defenders not to defend anymore. Well, 
Well, no, he, he went to try and get the ball and he missed, completely missed the ball and got Harry Kane. Like, there was contact there, clear contact even, um, you know. And the VAR had a really good look at it. It's not like they rushed it. It's not like they were like, go get, that's a penalty, let's go, go, go. It was like they really thought about it. And some people say, well, that means that they weren't sure. Well, you can look at something for a while and then go, yeah, you know what, I'm sure about this. So, I, mean, I don't know. And I think the referee, you know, everyone say, oh, it's the referee's fault, referee's fault. Well, VAR, the team of VAR could have said, nah, it's not really a penalty, mate. And he would have abided by their decision. So, to put it all on the referee is a bit stupid as well, in my opinion. But it is what it is. Like I said, people are going to say whatever they want about it. Um, I don't care, to be honest with you, it benefited my team. Would it have mattered if it had been the other way around? Maybe I would have been probably be the one to say, Oh, that's never a penalty, blah, blah, blah. but there was contact in the box. He didn't get the ball, he swung his leg out, didn't get the ball at all, and then hit Harry Kane's foot. Some people say, Well, you know, he'd already had a shot, blah blah blah. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, if, I touch, if I'm running along and I touch the ball, you don't, you touch me, and I fucking fall over, then that's a foul. So, I, I don't really understand why the people confused about it but it is what it is that's my opinion let me know what you think about it um but anyway going into the second half and um, 1-1 i think the first half before going to the second half i think the first half was very very good um more of the same from this switzerland game for me um england they played really really well probably the best half um besides conceding early i think the best half football that england have done all tournament um in the first halves of all the games so i say um yeah, like I said, Saka was brilliant, unplayable. Um, they they were really struggling to can contain Saka. And he very very unfortunately had a goal disallowed in the second half because Kyle Walker doesn't know what the offside line is. Um, yeah, so I mean, going to the second half. The second half was a lot slower. Both teams, I think, really and you know England get a lot of stick for being boring, but I think both teams decided. You know what? It's one one. Don't concede. Uh, if it goes to extra time, if it goes to penalty, so be it. Just don't concede. And it, when both teams are just concentrating on not conceding, um, yeah, it becomes a, a bit of a boring seat, a bit, a bit of a boring half. Is what I'm trying to say. And um, yeah, I think it was boring. The second half was boring, but I think England had the best of chances. Um, the Netherlands are always in um, dangerous. You know in counter-attack I think England are quite vulnerable in the counter-attack and that's what scares me about Spain by the way you know Scott Southgate makes some changes really big changes Oli Watkins came on uh, Carl, uh, Carl Palmer come on as well Cole Palmer whatever his name is um, and yeah they've changed the game uh, obviously Harry Kane did nothing for me he, he scored the penalty sure I think Saka would have scored it I think anyone else would have scored it but Harry Kane just doesn't play as a striker, he just always wants to be involved and that means that he's always on the halfway line and he's like, well, we don't have an outlet. And, you know, Saka's, even one point Saka cut it back for, for a really nice cutback in the middle of the box and there was no one there because Harry Kane was on the halfway line because he just wants to be involved. Like, he just needs to remember that he's a striker and he's there to put the goal on the back, ball on the back of the net and, um, it's not all about him. Um, and he, yeah. So anyway, Harry Kane comes off. Oli Watkins comes on and immediately changed the game and suddenly in the last 10 minutes or so Netherlands were right on the ropes um, and yeah Oli Watkins comes out you know Cole Palmer gets the assist where Oli Watkins scores a really 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 fantastic goal and absolutely because Lazo and um, yeah the keeper had no chance you know I think it was the 86th minute or so so um, yeah they didn't really have any chance and it was just defend 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 from England and we got it we managed to get it in the night minutes which is surprising for me I thought, you know, I really did think it was going to be penalties. Um, but yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I think, you know, overall, I think England were the better team. Um, Netherlands had some really good chances. I think it was quite an entertaining game, to be honest with you, especially for neutrals, especially in that first half as well. Um, yeah, I think, I think it was just a really good game. Stressful for us England fans, but um, that's what we live for, I guess. Um, and yeah, brilliant. I think England deserved to go through. Um 
you know, Virgil van Dijk was a bit salty after the game. Fair play. Well, if you spend all game ranting and raving at the referee, and the, why would you be surprised if he doesn't? If the referee doesn't want to talk to you after the game, it's no point going to shake his hands like Christian Pulisic the other day, like a couple of America. Like you've been abusing him all game. Why? Why would he want to shake your hand after that? Uh, maybe he should have done it as a professional referee. Fair play, but at the same time, like the referee, in my opinion, is a human being. And you know, if you've been slagging me off all day, all game, and you've been criticizing me and calling me a fraud or all these names or whatever, then you know I don't have to shake your hand if I don't want to. Um, so yeah, I think he was a bit sorry, but it is what it is. You know, um, you know, it could feel hard done by the by the penalty, but sure. But they had other chances. Um, it's not the penalty's fault that they didn't manage to score any other goals. They could have done. Um, you know, they had some really good chances on the count on the um, on the break, and uh, they didn't make the most of them. You know, Bigfoot made some really good saves. The defense as well was pretty solid, uh, apart from the slip out for the goal. Um, yeah, so I didn't think they, they had plenty of chances to score another goal. They just couldn't do it. So that's what it is. You, you have to admit that the better team won in this game. So, But having said that, going into the final, um, I'm terrified of Spain, to be honest with you. I'm terrified of this. You know, I think if we play like we played against Netherlands, and maybe not so much Switzerland. I think we were solid against Switzerland. But if we played like we did against Netherlands, I think Spain could do some real damage. And I wouldn't be surprised if we lose by a couple of goals even. Having said that, you know, um, we did pretty wellish in finals. It's just, you know, getting, going into uh, the penalty, um, penalty stage afterwards. But yeah, like I said, Spain's a terrible um, opponent for us to face. I think Spain's been the best team in the tournament. Uh, they deserve to win it, if I'm being brutally honest. Uh, but like I said, like, why not? Why can't England go out and do a job for 90 minutes and somehow you know nick a win um we'll have to wait and see i think you know we'll have to talk about gareth southgate as well i'll do that um the end of the end of the next video my last video obviously because there's one more game left after this um but i'll probably analyze gareth southgate a little bit reaching two europe euros finals um in a in a row um pretty decent i think he's a decent record for england even though the football's been dire and his lineups and his selections and there's loads of things that we can criticize him about i think you know you have to hold your hands up to the record apart from the quarter final finish in the last world cup he's been he's done pretty well and we have to acknowledge that but like i said we'll have to wait and see what the next video is going to be what the result's going to be so yeah hope you watch the game let me know if you what you think about the game what you think about the penalty um, what do you think about the change should Ollie Watkins start instead of Harry Kane next game I don't think so I think we'll start the same lineup and do the same kind of tactics and subs in this game uh, as we did in the um, Netherlands game but um, yeah let me know what you think about the players as well do you think Belling Belling gets quite a lot of stick Declan Rice got a low stick as well which is crazy because um, you know one mistake in one game um it's just, you know, just gives the um, opposition fans, you know, fans of other clubs a chance to, a rare chance, should I say, to, you know, go in on Declan Rice, which is weird. But anyway, um, let me know and we'll have a conversation in the comments. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, I really do appreciate it. I'm going to do a jersey um, giveaway when I get to 500 uh, subscribers. So um, be subscribed if you want to be involved in that and I'll pick a subscriber at random and they can get a jersey. Not quite sure which ones yet. Um, I'll have to um, do a little post and maybe on Twitter um, near the time, see which jersey is the most popular. But anyway, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Um, I have next Tuesday off because the game is on Monday morning. So expect the video probably uh, next Tuesday. So... It'll probably be Monday if you're in the US, but we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I'll see you in a few days. Have a good weekend, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys very soon. Adios.